Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Live Bird TV. So, uh, this pod, well, this YouTube video I'm about to do now isn't a personal attack on Anfield Agenda. It's an example that I'm using. I've got nothing against Craig in the video at all, apart from the fact I agree with probably 99.9% .9 of everything he says. But that's his entitlement to say what he says and my entitlement to not agree with it. So where do we start? I've created this uh, channel because I am quite fortunate to have spent a couple of years working at Anfield under Jurgen Klopp and uh, during the season we won the league. And I've seen a lot of things in that time I was there, like the development of the main stand, the away, the away end, and also the training ground. So I'm, I wouldn't say a staunch supporter of FSG, but I'm certainly one that won't have them slagged off by people that haven't got a Scooby-Doo. Now, the reason behind me doing this channel is because I want to, you know, sort of level out the hatred and the, the trending and the, the social media nonsense that happens every time, you know, middle-aged men don't get what they want in the transfer market. Now, let's start from the beginning. Working on, working at Anfield was, a, was an amazing experience for myself. It also got me to see things that not many people get to see. Working at the training ground was an experience as well. Now, I'm going to go cast back to a couple of years ago uh, when I was working at the AXA, well, it's now the AXA training ground, but it was formerly the academy at, 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 in Kirby. And I remember getting a radio f call through and it was with a map and it was a map that it was highlighted that John W. Henry and Linda Peruzzi and a couple of members of FSG were coming and we had to get whatever area or well, the area that was highlighted, we had to get that zone spotless and ready and cleaned and, and, and immaculate for his, 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 his appearance. Now, what I did notice was after about three or four hours of doing my job, I noticed John Henry just walking up and down. What's It's like a mile long. Anyone that's ever been to the academy knows just how big it is in Kirby. And he was just looking at all the open fields and he was looking at, you know, basically, he looked like a man with pure vision. You know, he was going dead slowly in his walking and he was pointing here and pointing there. And this is the side that I was fortunate to see but that other people don't see with regards to FSG. Now, what he was doing is he was he was talking about the extension of the academy, which was basically to bring the first team together with the academy, and to extend Kirby to become a one, you know, one you know one age group complex. So it would run from all the kids, all the way through to uh, to to the first team. And when I say all the kids, I mean, I've worked there. So what, what I'm saying to you is, I mean, you have the Michael Owen changing room, you have the Robbie Fowler changing room, because that could be the under 10s, the under 9s, under 8s, under 7s, under 6. The whole funnel of Liverpool Football Club system runs through that complex now. Now, if you listen to things like the Anfield Agenda and other platforms, all you hear is moan, 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 his fault, his fault, his fault, blame, 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 FSG out. It couldn't be further away from the truth. And this is the reason why I've decided to do this channel, because someone's got to stick up for them. Someone's got to stick, say something. Now, people that are currently working at the club can't really do that because they'll get they'll get sacked. It's just the way it works. You can't speak about anything that goes on at the club when you work at the club. I don't work there no more, so I can about what I've seen and what I'm hearing. So the transfer window, we spent. 10 to 12 million on Chiesa. What a signing. Let's just start with that. What a signing. We've bought a world-class goalkeeper for 33 million or 30 million, whatever it is. Brilliant. Okay, it's not the 200 million Man United spend. It isn't the 250 million, whatever Chelsea spent. But who cares? Because I had this argument the other day with people on the Anfield agenda, similar fans that, 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 he, that he seems to entice and get wrapped around his finger. Because they all buy into his brainwave. And this is the problem. When you've got a good following, like he has, I'm not having a go at him. He's got a good following, which is what I intend to get myself. Uh, you can brainwash fans that are not from the area, that, that don't know what the actual real hardcore fans think. In this image I've put up, he's called himself the GOAT. He's f nowhere near the GOAT. He doesn't know a th fucking thing about what goes on at Liverpool. Doesn't know a thing. The other day I did a video live to warn fans that they needed to get to the ground early for Brentford because the ticket system was down. That had been down for a week and that Liverpool had disabled chat online uh, so you couldn't even get hold of them, right? 
Did he put any videos up about that? No, because he didn't even know it was going on. So all of his videos are clickbait nonsense. And it's based on, you know, oh, well, you know, Liverpool and FSG are with stingy tight kits. And let's not forget the video he did a few years back when he called for Jurgen Klopp, but he didn't have the balls to call for it. He did a video saying, is it time for Klopp to go? And you can see he wanted to say it, but he wanted to see the feedback first of his of his of his of his fans. But he was pushing for it. Now, I'm only using him as an example. I've got no against him. I keep saying this, but it's it's just because it, you'll know what I'm talking about when I get to the subject in matter. These sites are clickbait nonsense. Right. This is why I'm going to start Live Bird TV now, because I know people that work at the club currently, people that used to work at the club. And I am quite fortunate to be in a position where I live. You know, I used to live on Anfield Road for years. So I've got a lot of friends around the area, but I live 10 minutes away from the ground. So I know what goes on at the club. For example, I know lads that go every week home and away uh, and, and myself I go to games as well. So I know who, what's going on at the club. There is nowhere near an agenda right for fsg out in the supporters that go to the ground and then the people of this city there isn't there isn't the noise is all on x the noise is all on anfield agenda the noise is all on nonsense sites that stoke up hatred we are in a phenomenal place as a football club that phenomenal we don't even have to go and spend 200 million to catch up with everybody else right man united have been spending 200 million now three summers running they finished mid-table last season and their worst uh, position in Premier League history, right? Liverpool don't need to do that. I had this farcical argument the other day by a fan that said to me, Ipswich and uh, Brighton have spent more than us or whatever. Well, can I ask them, that fan, this question? How much would Ipswich and Brighton and, you know, to say Burnley there, but they'll in it, Palace or anyone have to pay for Luis Diaz? For Mohamed Salah, for Gravenberch, for, for Sir Bosley, for McAllister, for Robertson, for Van Dyke, right? What you have to understand is Liverpool hold the money. They don't spend it. They don't squat it in the back of the pockets of the FSG. You know, John W. Henry ain't sitting here now with a big stack of money on his knee like Anfield Agenda and many other pods will tell you that he is. I will categorically tell you this now. FSG have never taken a penny out of Liverpool. Never taking a penny out of Liverpool. And in 2010, 2011, when they saved the club from administration, they cleared £267 million worth of debts. So if anything, we owe John money, not the other way round initially. And now we've obviously paid that back. What you also don't understand is that what we do is we're now so sound minded with, with profits and sustainability that the minute a top target becomes available, then we can, we can make the deal happen. For example, Anthony Gordon. Anthony Gordon would have been a Liverpool player had uh, Newcastle not pulled the plug early in the window because they approached us and then changed their mind. Liverpool were ready to go with the money for Anthony Gordon. Here's another one. Zubamendi, the deal was done. He agreed to join us. He gave, uh, he gave Richard Hughes his word. The, the money was there. And the deal was pulled away at the last minute. Like Gerard did to Chelsea, shit happens. The fact from, remains, the money is there. Just because people like Craig on Anfield Agenda demand we spend it willy-nilly and just go and blow it away, all that means we have got weak owners, right? It means that channels like myself has to start standing up for what's good and what is the, the long-term beneficiary of Liverpool being in the best place possible. I am fortunate. I work for a football club called Affordable Football Club Liverpool, AFC Liverpool, a club fought, founded in 2008 by 1,000 Liverpool fans, Hillsborough survivors and everything, that built this football club in, in, in a protest against how much the game was going towards the north end of money and away from the supporters' pockets. So I know how it is to work for a club that is formed based on the way it's going. If Anfield Agenda and other sites get their way and get their voices heard and the majority and to overwhelm uh, the, the, the supporters, then where are we going? Because I'll tell you this, they want FSG out, but who do they want to come in? The only person, people that are able to buy Liverpool Football Club and have a spare six billion are state ownership or people you really don't want running your football club. I love the way we are run. I love the way we focus. I'll categorically tell you this now. I guarantee you Chiesa has a better season than Anthony, Mudrich, uh, Sancho, uh, Neto, 
and all the millions and millions and millions and millions of pounds squandered on panic buys. I guarantee you'll have a better season than him. I love the way we do it. I love the way we, we, we run as a football club. And if we were sold tomorrow, right, we are sold without an ounce of debt. Manchester United are a billion pound in debt, but yet the Glazers spend a fortune, you know, but they want them out. Fans are so fickle, right? Chelsea have been run into the ground by a lunatic called Todd Bowley and don't even get me started on Man City. They are panicking that much about what's going to happen to them in the next few months that they're selling nearly every player now to fund what could be to cover the, co the costs of probably dropping down three divisions. So the way I see it is, like, and I'll say this again, do not listen to channels that just want you to click. He knows what he's doing and other sites know what they're doing. I know people that have been going to Liverpool and season ticket holders and people that have been going to this club since the 70s and they have never once said to me FSG out. You know why? Because they know the club is soundly run. They thanked John Henry and FSG for saving the club from them cowboys, Hicks and Gillette, who wouldn't even pay £7 million for Gareth Bale if he listened to the overlap the other week with Rafa. So the facts remain, if you want a channel that's free to subscribe to, which will give you what's happening at the club, the real vibe, don't go on don't go on X and see trending and people like John O'Sullivan and all that, because they just love they love Liverpool to be like a like in, in depression. If we lose a game, these people pop out like a, a, a like a like a like a what's it called? Like a parasite. They grow, they grow and grow and grow. The more poorly Liverpool do the bigger their voices become so we as supporters now must drown out these channels and drown out those people that seem to thrive on Liverpool being at the lowest form of of morality and excitement I am excited by Arnie Slot I'm excited by the squad we've got and if you think about it it's all right saying let's bring players in but who are you taking out? So if we bring in a left back, he's, he's not going to play ahead of Robinson. If we bring in a right back, he's not going to play ahead of Trent. If we bring in a centre back, he's not going to play ahead of Trent, uh, uh, Van Dyke and Canate or Van Dyke and Kwanzaa. It's going to be top, top class. If we bring in a centre midfielder, you're removing the World Cup winner. You're removing Sabozlai. You're removing Gravenberch, who's starting the season brilliantly. I said this the other day. If Sabozla, if Gravenberch was a new signing, people would be doing cartwheels. But what we will do on Live Bird TV is we will speak the truth. I will tell you what is going on around Anfield. If, there's, if the, there is a protest or if there's anything against the owners, you'll hear it from me first. But from now on, I can categorically tell you this. Every single lad that I know and woman and child that go in that ground has got a great spring in their step at the moment. We've got a great squad. We know we'll sign the contract extension to Trent, Salah and, and Virgil. We'll just probably wait till January. That's just the way we do things. We don't even panic with contracts. We look first. We don't panic. Let me remember Mesut Ozil's contract at Arsenal when he got the 300 grand a week. Remember Aubameyang's? They didn't turn up after then and it cost them millions. FSG don't make many mistakes and if they do make mistakes, they hold their hands up and rectify it ASAP. Now get on this uh, Live Bird TV if you want a good channel with the, with the ear to the ground of L4. You'll never walk alone.